when the door opened and my publisher, R.J. Walker Hebron, came in. With him was a short man with terrible hair and a pair of eyebrows that seemed somehow impossible. <laughs> this is Eros Frant, said R.J. Walker Hebron. He's a very exciting author. I was surprised to hear this, not because Mr. Frant didn't look exciting. Authors are like their books, I say, and that they can't be judged by their covers. But because Walker Hebron didn't deal in exciting authors. Or if he did, he wasn't saying them my way. To my certain knowledge, neither Padre Alessandro nor Max Hemnitz had ever penned an exciting word in their lives. And nor, I was prepared to bet my life savings, that A.J.L. Ferber. In fact, sometimes on long nights stranded in one of her sentences, I pictured Madame Ferber writing an exciting word and hurriedly scratching it out, lest the infection spread to the other words. Eros Frant nodded with such violence that he nearly dropped the large package he was holding. As it was, several sheets of paper fluttered out from it, and both Walker Heaven and I lurched to grab them from the air. Well, said Walker Heaven, I'll leave you two to get acquainted. And he walked out of the room. Shall we go to cof for coffee, I said to Frant. In the coffee shop, Frant turned out to be an agitated kind of man. His eyebrows worked as he talked, and he talked like he moved in short, jerky bursts. And he looked around every time he spoke, as though one wrong word would bring hidden assassins running from the shadows. He had ordered an enormous cup of coffee. To be fair, he'd had no choice, as the coffee house only sold coffee in enormous cups. And he sat behind it like a tail gunner, occasionally reaching out to it and finding it either too hot to drink or too heavy to lift. <laughs> this book, he said in an accent that was both thick and staccato at the same time, is my life's work. I must admit, that isn't a sentence a translator wants to hear. <laughs> it sounds fine on the radio in an interview or at a fancy awards ceremony, but when you're the poor fool tasked with rendering someone's life's work into readable English, it has to be bad news. The life's work brigade are very fussy about anyone tampering with their precious prose and tend to take every alteration or improvement personally. Should we say that your first memory involving a red toy fire engine was heavy with emotive force or pregnant? It's a minefield. Opt for heavy, and you risk being accused of making something beautiful into a workaday cliché. Use the word pregnant, and you're somehow preempting the next six chapters dealing with the birth and subsequent jealousy of your younger sibling. I'm not kidding. I've had a writer say that my vocabulary suggestions disemboweled his narrative. <laughs> I was about to ask Frank what his life's work was about when he slammed it down on the table between us and pulled out a few pages. Here, he said, tell me what you think. And he sat back in his chair, cradling his coffee cup in both hands like a huge dormouse. I looked at the pages. They were typed manually, and they were in Italian. I mean, sort of. They were in Italian the way that Ivanhoe and all that kind of stuff is in English. All thee and verily and forsooth. It wasn't medieval Latin in any real way, but it wasn't real Latin either. It was all, as I say, knights in armour stuff. I scanned a few paragraphs. There are a lot of words here that are new to me, I said. I flipped back to the title page, and my heart sang. La cronac de mondinos imaginarios. I don't quite understand, I said. Frank, Frank smiled in a way that even I could tell was meant to be indulgent and knowing. It just made his face look crazier. This isn't English. Oh, I know, he said, his eyebrows dipping condescendingly. I know. It's not conventional medieval Italian at all. It's a dialect of my own invention. A parallel dialect, if you know what I mean. I did know what he meant, but I was damned if I was going to say it. This book, whose name I'm sure you've discerned, is called The Chronicle of Imaginary Worldlets. <laughs> Worldlets, I was finally able to say. Yes, he said, it's a palimpsest, an anachronistic samizdat, a found text. A bulletin from a place that has never existed. Cities, rivers, people, stories. All from these imaginary worldlets. You wrote this, I said. Every word, he said. And straight into the dialect of the Cronach. I didn't want to obscure the purity of the text, you see. No, I can see that, I said. I expect that's my job. I would like to work very closely with the translator on this, said Frant. I want to be sure that the translation is as accurate as possible. The translation of your half-made-up language, I wanted to say. <laughs> Instead, I said, 
but you speak English yourself. Why not just write it out in English? As I spoke, Frank began shaking his head. No, 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 he said. The text has to be translated, just as if it were a real medieval text waiting to be discovered. I decided not to point out that if it were a real medieval text, it would be in Latin, not some half-arsed Lord of the Rings fan pretend Italian. It's not my job to point things out in that way. So I simply said, well, it will both be a challenge and a privilege to work with you. <laughs> Frant just sat there, smiling like a booby. I picked up the manuscript and pretended to gaze at its awesome magnificence. In reality, I was weighing it. Thank you very much.